In this video, we're briefly going to talk about several non-ideal effects associated with MOSFETs. However, unless we are told otherwise, in this course, we're going to neglect them. So the first one that we're going to consider is our short channel effects. And so this is, of course, becoming more and more relevant as our device sizes are shrinking. So what we're covering in this course is going to be relevant for sort of classical uh, larger devices to get a good understanding of the basic mechanism. However, with current state-of-the-art devices, a lot of the stuff we're learning isn't going to be relevant because of the small dimensions of the device. And basically these short channel effects are going to become relevant as the device critical dimension, which again is typically that channel length between the source and the drain, decreases between about two nanometers. So it decreases below about, sorry, not two nanometers, two micrometers. Uh, two nanometers is of course very small. Um, so below two micrometers, and as I've stated earlier, current state-of-the-art devices have critical dimensions on the order of seven to 10 uh, or 14 nanometers. And so not to get into this a whole lot, but basically as our channel gets that small, the actual physics is changing and we have to consider our electron transport across the channel a little bit differently. Um, so there's a little bit more details in your text on page 141, but of course we could go into this a lot in a lot more depth. Um, I think one thing in particular of interest, if anybody wants to look into it a little bit further, is something called strain engineering. And so this is sort of tangentially related to this idea of short channel effects, um, particularly because as our channel is getting smaller, it's harder for our, uh, for our charge carriers to move across it because if we're getting to nanometer dimensions, we're talking about 10 atoms or you know, on the order of that for our channel in state-of-the-art devices. So one approach is to do strain engineering where we essentially use different materials in the channel to sort of open it up and make it more spacious and therefore easier for our charge carriers to flow. Uh, so again, very interesting thing just that we've touched on very brief briefly for anybody who's interested to look into further. The second non-ideal effect is something called the body effect. And so this is particularly relevant in ICs where we have a lot of transistors together. And what happens is we can sometimes see changes in our threshold voltage if our source and body terminals aren't connected. So changes in our VTN or VTP, depending on whether we have NMOS or PMOS, when our source and our body terminals, so remember we do have that fourth body or substrate terminal that we need to consider, are not connected. And so typically what's done if we're talking about integrated circuits or ICs is of course we have, you know, literally billions of these transistors in a given chip is we can take all of those body terminals or substrate terminals and tie them together. Uh, of course, not literally tie them, but connect them electrically to the same point. And we want to connect that point to the lowest potential in our circuit. So that's often what's done if we're working with ICs. The third non-ideal effect we're going to consider is something called subthreshold conduction. So we've kind of already touched on this a little bit previously. So subthreshold conduction. And so essentially what this is, is we're going to have some small inversion current even before we get to that threshold voltage. So some small inversion current even before VTN again or VTP is realized or is applied. And so we talked about this a little bit before because we said that really we've kind of arbitrarily stated that the threshold voltage is when we have this operating mode called quote unquote strong inversion. But before we get to strong inversion, we actually have weak inversion. So we do have some inversion layer before VTN, and that results in some small amount of current that's flowing in the device even before it's quote unquote turned on with this VTN. And so the main implication of this is that if we want to turn off a device, we need to bias it at least a few tenths of a volt below VTN. So bias at least a few tenths of a volt 
below our threshold, and I'm of course kind of by default talking about a, an NMOS uh, enhancement mode device. These things are changing whether we're talking about depletion mode or, or PMOS. Uh, well, I guess here below we're just talking about NMOS. It could be depletion or enhancement mode, uh, but a few tenths of a volt below VTN to truly turn off the device. And so that's just saying we're gonna have some current right before we reach threshold, so we wanna get it well below threshold in order to get rid of any of that subthreshold conduction. So the next thing we wanna talk about briefly is breakdown effects. And so there's several that we're just gonna mention, um, but there are of course several ways that we could have breakdown of our device. So breakdown effects. Um, so one, we can have PN junction breakdown. And so this is gonna be the same avalanche type breakdown that we mentioned briefly when we were looking at diodes. So our PN junction diodes. If we have a large enough uh, bias applied to our drain, we can have an avalanche breakdown between our drain and our substrate junction. So drain substrate with a large drain voltage applied. So another thing that can happen is we can have something called punch through. And so with our punch through, what's happening is the depletion region from the drain. So remember we said, as we increase that drain voltage relative to our source, we create a depletion region around the drain. And so if that depletion region extends to the source and goes into the source, then we say we have punch through. So depletion region, extends from drain to source. And as you might imagine, that's going to be more of an issue for short channel devices because there's less distance for that depletion region to travel. And of course, as we kind of touched on a little bit earlier, there is some maximum width that our depletion region can reach based on doping concentration and device geometry. Uh, one other thing that we can see as we're approaching some of these breakdown effects is a parasitic BJT action. So parasitic BJT. And so this is also gonna be relevant for smaller devices. And so this kind of makes sense because of course we have all these P and N regions uh, in our device. And so this is something that is not ideal. Uh, and then the last type of breakdown that we're gonna mention here briefly is we can have gate oxide breakdown. So gate oxide breakdown. And so this occurs if our gate voltage, VG, is too large. Now, typically what we're gonna have is a safety margin that is a factor of three lower than the limit. Safety margin, which is a factor of three lower than the limit. So say a given oxide based on the thickness and the material should be okay up to 30 volts, then we can say, well, just to be on the safe side, let's only go up to 10 volts. So that is one way that we can avoid that. And one reason we wanna be careful with that is because the oxide quality is going to depend a lot on whether we have defects in there. Um, so that can change the breakdown voltage of our oxide pretty drastically. So we can play it safe by just having that safety factor in, in place. And then the last thing I briefly wanna mention is temperature effects. So as we've seen with all of our devices, there are several parameters that are dependent on temperature. And so we wanna be aware of that. But again, we're not going to really consider it too much in this class. So the main parameters that are going to be dependent on temperature are our threshold voltage which again, I'm saying VTN, but this also applies to PMOS, so VTP, as well as our conduction parameter KN. Uh, we remember in that we had our mobility, we had our oxide, uh, capacitance per unit area, so things that are gonna change as temperature is changing. Um, so we wanna be aware that in different environments, we might have different operation of our transistor. So again, all of these non-ideal effects are things that we're not going to consider in this class in terms of when we're doing our analysis. So unless mentioned otherwise, we're going to ignore these. However, I think it is important to realize that they exist and that we don't have these ideal transistors in practice.